What's up guys, Rev here and in this tutorial I'm going to show you the basics of how to edit your airsoft gameplay footage. By the end of this video, you'll be able to turn your video from this to this or even this. What's up guys, Rev here and today I'm going to show you how to edit airsoft gameplay footage. So. For today's tutorial, this is for someone that's brand new to editing. Someone that has almost no idea who just downloaded a legal copy of Adobe Premiere Pro and is looking to start. So I recommend using Adobe Premiere Pro just because it's very similar to Adobe Photoshop. So if you know a lot about Adobe Photoshop or you know about the Adobe Suite, you're going to be very familiar with Adobe Premiere Pro. Now to begin, what I like to do is go to New Projects. Oh, well, one more thing. Uh, this is a disclaimer. I'm not really an expert at Adobe Premiere, nor am I certified or anything. So if there's like a, a better way of doing something, um, go ahead and just post it on the comments section below and let me know. But this is a, a way of doing things that I've been working on for the past two years that has been pretty good. Um, and I've been following the same process of it. And I'm going to share it with you guys. So to begin, what I like to do is go to New Project. <coughs> And go to name so this is going to be creating the project you can name it whatever you want i'm going to call it tutorial one and for general scratches in just just go ahead and uh leave those the same uh none of the settings really matter that much i mean they probably do but i don't let them i don't use them so go ahead and press ok next you're going to let it load and you're going to see four panes so i selected this footage i was i actually did this earlier so i selected this one because it works fine so we're gonna go here and to do that what we did is that we go click click here drag and let go and you're gonna get it right here so it's gonna create a new little instance of the file and we're gonna drag it all the way to the timeline and let go so now you can see that it's right now caching conforming to the sequence let that load and what you're gonna see is you can see two things number one you're gonna see the the audio underneath the video and you're gonna see the video up here and you're gonna be and to be honest you're gonna be using more of the audio as a reference tool for it because in airsoft what you're gonna notice is that when you shoot with your airsoft gun you're gonna see the peaks of the shots fired so the first thing I want to teach is to tell a story that is more cohesive and more uniformly so you don't want to you want to make a video that's 15 minutes long you want to shorten that down to something that's five minutes or so forth because people's attention spans don't go past six minutes I find like the best videos are less than five minutes long so I like to stick to that format what I like to do is just go through the, watch the video a couple times and so forth since I'm doing a tutorial I'm only gonna go through a few of the key points for editing. So how do you lose 15 minutes of footage and take that down to four? So what we do is that we're gonna be cutting a lot. So we're gonna cut a lot of the stuff that really doesn't matter or doesn't t really tell a story. So for example, if you watch this, and let me lower that. So right there, and you're gonna see that um, I run from this car. So looking at this video right now, what I want to do is I want to cut to the point where I'm about to run. So right here. So up to there, there's about four seconds of me just wasting time. So to be able to, so to cut video, what you have to do is you're going to click your razor tool or press C on your keyboard. And you're going to go to where you want to cut it. So right here. So that cut the video and I want to cut the audio now. So then afterwards, I'm going to go and I'm going to go to the selection tool, click V, select the video and the audio. Here I'm going to click delete, select any of the empty space, and then right click, and then click on ripple delete. Now you're going to see that it starts from the po that point, and I'm moving. So that's just kind of like one of the principles I have, that you want to be cutting a lot of the, the fluff of running around, unless it adds to the story or adds context to it. So for example, if you have video of you walking through a, like a like a forest where there's a lot of fog or there's some action or there's like a lot of cool shots of you looking up at an angle, you want to keep those. But most of the time you want to cut a lot of this fluff. So for example, one example would be me right here where I'm crawling around and 
there's not a lot of stuff going on on that video. It doesn't make really good good video. So I'm gonna skip along around here because I know the footage, and I'm gonna go to the point where right about right here. So let's suppose I'm right here. So here I'm shooting. I shoot the guy. And of course, who wants to debate what I, whether I shot him or not, or, or actually where he shot me, which he didn't. So, because he was using a high cap. So the next thing I want to do is I want to be able to cut this. To start cutting this, what I do is I like to cut. So we'll start from here. Cut all that. Now, one thing a lot of people do is that they like to add a reticle to it. So the first example of that I'm going to show you is that I'm going to use a reticle. So what a reticle is generally is what you see that's on a on your red dot. So from here, what I'll do is I'm going to select my reticle, my reticle, my crosshair right here. So or cr crosshair too. Sorry, it's also a crosshair. So I'm going to select my crosshair, this one right here, and I'm going to drag it to the project. So just click, drag into here. Now another very important thing is that you want to be make sure that you're using a PNG and not a JPEG. And now when we put it over, you're going to see the reticle right here. Now, that's one thing that people like to do. Another thing that they like to do is to just have it right over when they start shooting at them. So using the reference of the of the peaks of when you shoot, I'll you use a crosshair right on top of it. So right about there. So now when you Watch the video. You see that the um, that's where I want to start. I want to put the crosshair. So now I'm going to go. I'm going to use the cut feature again. We're going to use the razor tool. I'm going to use a shortcut from now on. So I'm going to go use cut tool, cut it. So now it's only showing up to that section. Now I need to move since the crosshair is in the middle. I got to move it to the person. So I'm going to do now is I'm going to drag it here. Put it right there. But you're going to see in a second, the crosshair doesn't really follow the person. So from here, well I'll use I double click. And on the upper left hand corner, I go to effect controls. And here you're going to be able to see where you can animate. So I'm going to start right here. So what I'm going to do here is I double click it. And from here, I'm going to click on the position. And here, I'm going to animate with each frame the location of the crosshair. So here, I'm going to move it. The I'm going to keep the crosshair at center mass, and I'm just going to each frame moving it back, my scroll wheel back. You're going to see that it moves from each frame to each frame. So there you see how it's getting it's losing sync or it's not getting it's not sticking with the person. So I'm going to move that. So it's one frame, move it to the arm. Another frame, move it. Another frame, move it. Another frame, move it. Another frame, move it. Another frame. See, and you can sometimes skip the frames if they're the same, if they look like they're still on the target. So as long as it's not completely off, you don't have to be exact. Otherwise, you're just gonna go crazy because there's a you you're gonna be doing so many targets. So just just a general thing, just generalize, you know. And once a person gets out of view, you can stop using it, or when the thing cuts. So you'll notice in a second that it's gonna. It's almost over. There you go. So now when you watch the video, there you go. So now you have the crosshair is moving around. It's following that path. So that's one way I like to do it for CQB. And I generally prefer this way because it's much quicker once you get the practice than having do the other way. But the other way that I see a lot of people doing is they use a uh, red dot, uh, PNG of a red dot, like from Call of Duty or Titanfall or, or whatever game, and they like to put it on top of the video. So I'm going to show you how to do that as well. So we're going to delete this. So from here, what we're going to do is we're going to use the same process, the exact same process. So instead, what I like to do is I like to keep cut the points to where I'm shooting the person and putting the gun down. And you'll see why in a second. And from here, what I do is I get look for the rate ADS. So I look for the ADS. And here I like to just drag it. That's it. 
So now you're going to have, instead of a crosshair, you're going to have this very, uh, it's okay. It looks, it looks decent. I don't know how to say it. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. It's an ADS. Pretty much it's aim down sights. It's a dude looking down aim down sights. Now, here's the, the trick. So, but what happens is that when you have it, you're going to have like two guys. You're going to have two things that are aiming down sights. So how to fix that. So what I do now is that I'm going back into the GoPro video. I select it. I make sure it's selected. And you can tell by the name that's on the left, upper left-hand corner. And you're going to use a scale. So we're going to scale this. And notice how I selected this part, not this part or this part. That's why I cut it there. So you're going to scale it. So it gives it kind of like a zoom, which looks decent. And then we're going to just rotate. So this is the up and down, the Y. And this is the X. So from here... I like to keep the target right on target and then just keep scaling it. And see how you have a black corner? You're just going to keep scaling until it's completely gone. And just keep modifying it. Keep modifying it. So now we're going to go again and play it. Now, as you can see, the same issue happened when we started doing the crosshair, where it wasn't on the target. It was, it was on the target on one frame, but then it would just completely go off frame, like right here. So to fix that, we're going to be syncing the GoPro video. Now, to do this, we're going to go from the start, and we're going to work in reverse. So instead of moving around the, the crosshair onto the GoPro video, we're going to be editing, removing the GoPro video and keeping the crosshair alone. So to do this, what I like to do is make sure that this go that the reticle is up. You see how you have that video right there? We're going to be scaling it around, trying to make it, try to hide it. We want to try to hide as much of that reticle on it. But I'm noticing that we have to do it, we have to cut it just a little bit. So we're going to start right here. And you might not be able to hide it all, but it's just fine. It's not a huge thing. So we're right here. I just want to just use this video right here just for reference so we'll start right here it looks decent and we'll even increase it just a tiny bit more because we keep shooting him Yeah, perfect. So we'll increase the size of this. Move this around. Right here. Now, no, one thing you start noticing is that you see that the in one frame it is in sync, but in the other frame it isn't. So what you'll do now is we're going to animate the GoPro video and leave the, the reticle by itself. So now to do that, we're going to go start from the beginning of the GoPro video. And we're going to click on Anime Position. Same concept as what we had previously. And we're going to keep it where this red dot right here is on his arm. So starting off, we're just going to keep going with that, keeping it on its arm for each and every frame. It's not as bad. This is a process that takes a while. So you're just going to keep it on his arm. Just keep it on his arm. And as you can notice, right underneath my, cro my uh, cursor, my underneath the, cu the cursor, you can see that there's a, a path being generated. So we're just going to keep doing that. And notice how underneath and the bottom of the, of the screen of the preview, you don't see the P90. So we're just going to keep doing that and until the end. So now when we play it, you see that it kind of looks like you're looking aiming down the sights. Now, as a final thing, because we, we want to go full Call of Duty, we got to add hit markers. So one of the ways to do a hit marker is it's two parts. You have to add an extra, uh, the hit markers of the thing you see and the thing you hear. So to do that, I like to keep everything organized. So I go here to my sniper, my hit marker. And again, I'm just dragging it all to the project. And this is also my MP3. So you can use, I think you can use any MP3 unless it's not one of those really weird ones. I recommend using an MP3. 
So now you have everything right there. What I like to start off with is the sound effect of the hit marker. So you can see right here, there's a little chirp right there. So we're just going to put that right here and then just cut it all up. And now it's just a little, like a little, a little click. You hear it? So we want to also increase the sound of this. So again, we're selecting the audio, but now instead of video, it has more, has more uh, audio effects. So you're going to increase the decibel of that, uh, of the hit marker. Now you can actually hear it. I'll just, you know, just put it a four. Or whatever. Doesn't matter. It's all good. So whatever you want. Generally, best thing, generally you just want to try it out and see how it is. Nothing animated. I don't want to animate this. There you go. So, from here, I put the hit marker every time I press the trigger. So, that's the trigger right there. And usually you can tell by the peaks. So, right here's a peak. Here's a peak. Here's another peak. And here's another peak. So, you can kind of just keep going, keep going. Until all the peaks are until we add all those all those to there. So now we have hip marker sound. So it's gonna sound like this. Sounds pretty cool. Now, the next part is we're gonna put the hip markers. And this is actually a lot easier. So we're gonna be synchronizing the sound of it to the hip marker itself. So we're gonna go here and drag it. And you'll see that it's the whole frame. So we just want to cut it up in each and every time. And I want to start it off on this one, for example. Because again, and we want to then move this here, double click on it, effects control, and just get it to where it's to where it's almost on the red dot. Because it kind of just looks looks like Call of Duty. So right there. And then afterwards, we're gonna just hold the Alt key and drag it to each and every hit marker. So that's a hit marker, that's a hit marker, and that's a hit marker. So the final thing is gonna look like this. And from there you can actually use whatever sound effect that you want. I mean, you can even put like random stuff that's, you know, completely random, whatever you want. So now that you, once you added the hit marker and the sound of the hit marker, what I do now is I like to preview it. Looks decent. And let's suppose I just that's all the video, right? So now from there, what I do is to, sh to have that video up to be able to upload that video onto YouTube. I hit File, Export, Media, and then hit Format, Windows Media, Preset, 1080p. And then in video, I like to set the frames of what I was while I was recording. So on that GoPro I was using 60, so I hit 60. And then right there, I'll hit the save setting, the save preset, give it a name and press OK. And, and I gave this one 1080p 60 frames, and this way you can actually use it over and over again. So there's never a time where it looks different or so forth. So there you can see it, the rendering of it. And you press export, and there you go. And that's your first ever video, your first air, airsoft footage video. I hope you found this tutorial informative. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials as well as gameplay. Lastly, don't forget to drop a comment on what other topics or tutorials you would like for me to cover. And I'll see you guys on the field.